pro-democracy activist Allah Abdel Fattah, who has British as well as Egyptian citizenship, has been in prison, <coughs> excuse me, been in prison or under police detention in Egypt since 2014. His most recent jail sentence, five years, was for sharing a Facebook post about human rights abuses in Egyptian prisons. Mr. Abdel Fattah is being denied visits from British Embassy staff in Cairo. That, according to a group of MPs and UK politicians, and they have written to the British Foreign Secretary appealing for urgent action. Now, Mr. Abdel Fattah began his hunger strike in Tora prison on the 2nd of April. To discuss the case, I'm joined by Allah Abdel Fattah's sister, Mona Saif. And Mona, first of all, I have to ask you, he's been on hunger strike for seven weeks or so. Yes. How is he right now? So today is uh, day 49 in his hunger strike. Um, my mother just saw him yesterday. Uh, he seems weak. He has lost a lot of uh, weight. Um, but he is resilient. And I think this is an important thing when you are um, under such dire circumstances and when you're being exposed to such, you know, such abuses. And, and indeed, he is in prison on his latest sentence because he divulged information or shared information about the allegations of terrible treatment and abuse inside Egyptian's prison, yes. Egypt's prison system. Uh, but he himself has recently been moved and it seems the Egyptians are now trying to give him a little bit better treatment, would that be right? I would say that the pressure of the uh, the action of the MPs here and the pressure of the media and the solidarity from so many people along with his hunger strike in the past few weeks mm. managed to actually shift things very slightly. So he has been moved to uh, a new prison. Uh, he is, we don't know yet if he's allowed, uh, so Ali has been uh, pre prevented from books and exercises and any time out of the cell since September 2019. So we are still, uh, we'll find out within a few days if this is changing in the new prison. Uh, but we know for sure it's, uh, it's not the maximum security prison. He was allowed a visit yesterday, a family visit mm -hmm. yesterday. And uh, we are hoping this means this is one step ahead to get the consular access, which he, we've been waiting for and since that, December. That's a key point, isn't it? Because he is a British citizen as well as an Egyptian citizen. He should, according to all of international law and norms, have access to British diplomats, but he does not. He does not, and they are not. And the Egyptian government is just stalling it. They are not giving. A, they are not even saying a clear no. They are just stalling the process since last December. Uh, and yes, he's absolutely. He has the right for a consular visit, not just by the international law, by the way, but also by Egyptian law. Like we, we've, we've told them that quite clearly. Um, and we also we think it's particularly because they want to isolate Alep from any. Um, ac access to, you know, uh, independent entities that will actually relay what he said. The, if I may, the, the background to this is that ever since 2014 and uh, General al-Sisi becoming president of Egypt, there has been a real crackdown on human rights and human rights activists like your brother. Do you see any sign right now that that, that might change? On a broader scale, no. I'm, I'm sadly no. I feel like the changes that are happening are very cosmetic, uh, are very on the surface and appearances. On a personal level, uh, now that we have the support of the UK government and now that we have the support of um, uh, my MP David Lamy and, and, and the, the letter that was sent and signed by 10 MPs and uh, 17 Lords, now that we have this and the support of Amnesty UK, so now that we have this collective support, I feel like there's a, a, a chance to actually get Ali out of this 10-year ordeal of prison um, and, and, and reunite our family mm. here. I mean, in the end, this is a, a family story for you, as well as uh, having a, a real political background. Uh, what is your brother going to do? I mean, a hunger strike can only go on for so long before his health deteriorates rapidly and terribly. What, what is going to happen, do you think? I don't know what is going to happen. I'm hoping we manage to actually release him and get him to safety here in London. Uh, before we have to be faced with this question. But I also have to say, the decision for Ali to go on hunger strike was not a rash one. He has been under a lot of abuses and torture for more than two years. He waited for the consular visit for five months before going on hunger strike. And so I think this is his way of taking over control of uh, his situation and of agency over his own body and his own voice and his own narrative. So the only way we can, ha the only thing we can do is help him, you know, get out safe as much as possible. Well, Mona Saif, all we can do is thank you very much for telling us about what is happening to your thank brother. Thank, thank you, you very, very much, much indeed. Thank you.